Good evening, church family. It's great to be back with you on another Wednesday evening. I'm so excited every time we get to uh, study God's Word, um, and I'm just so thankful for you tuning in uh, today. And please, uh, if you can, share your live stream on Facebook. And So tonight, I'd like to talk about why we as believers in Christ should develop a habit of fellowship. It's very important for us to develop this habit of fellowship with one another to encourage other believers in the Christian life. It is within this Christian fellowship that we begin to grow in our fellowship with God. And it's in this Christian fellowship that we're able to build relationship with those who are lost. The Bible reminds us over and over again that God is a personal God. He's not some far-off, distant God that wants nothing to do with his creation. He wants fellowship with us. It's very important to him. And he wants us to come to know him and spend time with him. If you notice, all of the social media is about fellowship. It's about connecting with one another. And so God made us as a people to want to connect with other people. And he wants us to have fellowship with each other. From the very beginning of creation, if you remember, God said that it was not good for man to be alone. So not only did we see that God created woman to have fellowship with man, but we also saw a close fellowship between man and God. We see that through, all throughout the Bible. In Genesis, we see that God and Adam and Eve had a closeness in the beginning. They had an intimacy with one another. And God provided for them even after the fall. As we go through Scripture, we read in so many other places in the Word of God that God had a close relationship with his people. If you look through some of the Bible passages, we see in Genesis 5, that Enoch walked with God. In Genesis 6, we see that Noah walked with God. And we read that David was a man after God's own heart. There's so many other instances where God had a close fellowship with man. And in return, these men and women lived faithful lives. It's such a beautiful picture that we see in the Word of God of having a close fellowship with God. And so now, we now yearn for that perfect harmony with God. We look for that fellowship with the Lord. And we can walk with God just like that. We can have a relationship with Him. We can truly walk with God when we have faith and fellowship with him. In Galatians 5.16, we're told to walk in the spirit, which means that we are to continually live a life that is pleasing to God. Because when we put our faith in Jesus, our relationship with God becomes the most important thing in our life. When we as passionate followers of Christ, we want to seek him. We want to please him. And it's through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross that allows us to have a close personal relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. I always like to quote the Reverend Billy Graham, and he once said, God doesn't want us to be isolated from other believers. They may not be perfect, but we're not either. We need each other. And we, when we cut ourselves off from other believers, our spiritual lives are weaker and incomplete. I agree with what Billy Graham says here. We need each other, especially now. We are imperfect people, and we need other imperfect people in our lives. The early Christians emphasized the importance of fellowship with one another. In Acts 2.42, we read, All the believers devoted themselves 
to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. And then when we continue reading in Acts 2, verses 46 and 47, we read on that they worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So what we see here in the book of Acts is that we see that a healthy Christian community attracts people to Christ. This growth of the early church was supernatural. And not only was it supernatural, but it was rapid. It says that it, they continued adding more. And it was all because they fellowshiped with one another. And it's all because in that fellowship with one another, they were obedient to God. I read a great definition of what Christian fellowship is. And so this definition said, the Greek word koinonia, translated fellowship in the New Testament, means essentially a partnership to the mutual benefit of those involved. Christian fellowship, then, is the mutually beneficial relationship between Christians who can't have the same identical relationship with those that are outside the faith. So having fellowship with believers in Christ is different than the fellowship that we should have with unbelievers. It is in these relationships with other believers that we have that we are united with each other by our common beliefs, our common purposes, and our common goals, just as the early church that we read about in the book of Acts. And so we also see that, you know, in, when we read the book of Acts, no one had to go to the disciples or any of the new believers and tell them, hey, by the way, now that you are saved by the blood of Jesus, you have to go out and you have to start practicing this thing that we call fellowship. They, didn't, they weren't told that. They didn't have to be told that. It was what they did. It was perfectly natural for them to do that. Once they were believers, they all got together and they gathered together. And when they gathered themselves together, it says this many times in the book of Acts, that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. It was a devotion that they had where they sat and they listened to the apostles' teaching. And they devoted themselves to the fellowship with each other. And then many times in the Bible we see that they also shared the Lord's Supper together and they prayed. This is a great example of developing a habit of fellowship with God and fellow believers in Christ. And the early church set this example for us. And we now should follow being committed to the fellowship of other believers. That's why we pray together. That's why we come together and we gather and we fellowship, whether it's in service or if it's online, and we break bread. We do the Lord's Supper and we pray together. We're following their example. And it also says that day by day, these early believers attended the temple together. And again, it says that they broke bread together in each other's homes. And I love how they say that they did this. They did this while praising God and having favor with all the people. They were praising God while they were doing this. They were happy. They were joyful. And that's why fellowship is important. Because I belong in God's family with other believers you think about it, we all have a sense of belonging. And to say that we belong to God's family, it means that God is our Father. 
in that it is when the Holy Spirit works in our hearts and we receive Jesus as our Savior that we're adopted into his family. In the book of John, John 1, 12, and 13, John wrote, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So God is not the father of all people. God is the creator of all people. But when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, we become children of God, and he becomes your father. We became children of God through a new birth. It's when we received Jesus that we became children of God. So John here is reminding us of the nature of the birth. And that those who have received him, it wasn't done by any human achievement or any human effort, but it was all God. And so this new birth that we have is something that brings change in our lives. We become a new creation in Christ. Charles Spurgeon put it this way. He said, The man is like a watch, which has a new main spring, not a mere face and hands repaired, but new inward machinery, with freshly adjusted works, which act to a different time and tune. And whereas he went wrong before, now he goes right, because he is right within. And so it's that we are this new creation in Christ. And so now the old things that we have, our old habits, our old love of sin, our old passions, they all pass away. And those old dead things are replaced with new things. These new things are so full of life and the glory of God. And as Charles Spurgeon wrote, we have a new inward machinery within us. And we begin to see the world differently. And so when we are in the family of God with other believers, we have a large and loving family. I always think about that, how it always talks about being a family and in the family of God. And so I can just imagine the family reunion that we will have in heaven of all the loved ones together that we know and that our family and our friends and even all the ones that we read about in the Bible. I think in heaven we're going to have one big loving family and for all eternity it's going to be spent praising God and unending fellowship. I don't know about you, but I look forward to the day. We also see that fellowship is important because we all need encouragement to grow spiritually. When we come together as a church family, we are to support each other, learn from each other, gain strength from each other, and pretty much just do life together. I always like it when I'm having a hard time with something. Not that I like having a hard time with something, but I do like the fact that when I do have a hard time with something, I'm able to reach out to friends who can help me. Or when I'm having a bad day, or if I'm starting to worry about something, I'm so thankful for my Christian brothers and sisters that I can reach out to. And sometimes when I reach out to them, I can gain some type of insight that I might not have thought about or some other way of thinking about something. And you get that from friends that are, that are believers as well as you. Or even just to call up and, and just get some encouragement from someone. It's always so wonderful to have that. And when we look in Proverbs, we see in Proverbs 27, 17, we read, Iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. So a piece of iron can sharpen another piece of iron. And there's a mutual benefit in rubbing these two iron blades together. It makes the knives more efficient 
and they're able to cut or slice easier. But if you think about it, one piece of iron would be impossible to sharpen without the other piece of iron. If we leave the piece of iron all by itself, it would become dull and useless. And so in the same way, God wants us to live and serve in a community of other believers. And it's his desire that within this community of believers that we build loving and growing relationships with one another. In the same way, our constant fellowship with one another is needed to make us stronger in our faith. And we can sharpen one another. We also see that fellowship is, in, is important in our relationship with God. In 1 John 1.3, John wrote, We proclaim to you that we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may fe have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. Fellowship with God is only possible through the blood of Christ. Jesus reconciled us to God through his death. And when we repent of our sins and we turn from our sins and we trust in Christ, we can live in fellowship with God, as John wrote about in his first letter here. And this type of fellowship with God is at the very heart of what it means to be a Christian. Being a passionate follower of Christ is not about any rules or regulations or rituals. It is a walk of personal fellowship with the living God. Just as we read about in Genesis and all throughout the Bible with Adam and Eve and Enoch and Noah and David, having this type of fellowship with God, it might sometimes seem shocking to us. And it was even shocking to those who the letter was originally written to. But I'm telling you right now, we can have a real living, breathing relationship with God the Father and with Jesus Christ. And Jesus can not only be our Savior, but he can be our closest friend, and we can call God our Father. The late Adrian Rogers spoke about 1 John 1, 3, and he called it the formula for fellowship. Because if you go on to verse 4, we see John write, we are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. This is the way that we can have fullness of joy, is to have fellowship with God the Father, His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and other believers in Christ. I once heard someone say that the most miserable man in the world is not an unsaved man, but it's a saved man who is out of fellowship with God. And it's true. I mean, many times when we are struggling with sin or when we're not attending church, either in person or online, or when we start getting neglectful of our prayer time or our Bible study time, I don't know about you, but I start feeling a little miserable. And I don't have that joy in me. And it's when we continue to pursue that fellowship with God and fellow believers that we can have that fullness of joy. And then we're going to not want to miss our prayer time or our Bible study time or assembling with other believers in church. And David wrote a psalm about this when he found himself out of fellowship with God. In Psalm 51, 10 through 12, he wrote, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Don't banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. David was crying out to God for a new heart. He was crying out to, to God for a clean heart. David was looking for restoration and to renew his relationship, his fellowship with God. And it seems that as David wrote some of these Psalms that he was so miserable running from God. And I think we should be miserable when we run from God too. And to have fellowship with God, we must live in the light as he is in the light. It's when we can have fellowship with each other 
and the blood of Jesus, his son, it cleanses us from all of our sins, as 1 John 3, 7 says. So we need to walk in the light. And every time I read that Bible verse, I start humming that song from DC Talk called In the Light, where they say, I want to be in the light as you are in the light. I want to shine like the stars in the heaven. O Lord, be my light and be my salvation. All I want to do is be in the light. So John is saying that there is possibility, that we, it is possible for us to walk in the light. And we know that we will not be in sinless perfection on this side of eternity, but we can walk in complete obedience to God. And it's also when we're walking in the light that we can enjoy the cleansing of our sins by the blood of Jesus. And so as we approach Easter, we know that because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, that we can be cleansed today. And when we're focused on our fellowship with God and other believers, it's when we can have a true heart for the lost. Now, our relationships with the lost will be differently than our relationships with fellow believers, but it's still important for us to build relationships with those who don't know Christ. And before COVID hit, it seemed a little bit easier to build relationships with those who don't know Christ, but we can still do it. I mean, think about your daily, your, your day. Think about those that you still see on a daily basis, maybe at work, at school, or when you're online. It's in those times that just pray that the Holy Spirit will guide you and that he will bring someone to your mind to pray for. And so then when you're starting to build a relationship with them, and you're able to build a relationship with them, just start asking them if there's anything that you can pray for that they have. And ask them if there's anything that they would like to pray with you about. You'll be surprised at how many people actually say yes that are unbelievers. And sharing Christ and his love begins with us establishing and building a real relationship with them. And don't be afraid to share your faith with an unbeliever because sharing the gospel with them is the greatest and most loving thing that we can do for someone. Remember, God doesn't, equip, doesn't call the equipped. He equips those he has called. And when we're in complete fellowship with God and we're obedient to the Holy Spirit, we will have the words to say. God can use you right where you are at. There's so many opportunities in our day-to-day -day basis that we can share the gospel everywhere. And with social media being so available, think about someone that you can reconnect with and maybe reestablish a friendship with them. And then trust that God will prepare their hearts and your hearts wherever that relationship will go. In Paul's writings, we see him having a heart for the lost. In Romans 10:1, Paul writes, Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. This was Paul's desire. This was his heart's desire. And this was his prayer to God. And we also read in Romans that Paul had a great sorrow and unceasing anguish over those who were lost and on the way to an eternity without God. And we can still, we can have that same heart for the lost. We can pray that all the people in our community, that the people in our neighborhoods, that the people in our workplaces, where we go to school, all of our families, we can pray that same prayer that they will be saved. Now is the time for those of us who know the Savior to proclaim Christ. Now is the time for us to go out to a lost world with the love of Christ. Now is the time for those without Christ to come to Christ. It's time for us to have a heart like Paul, to have a heart for the lost. And it's up to us as passionate followers of Christ to point the way to salvation and tell everyone that we meet of the good news that Jesus Christ offered himself at Calvary and died on the cross for our sins. But the good news does not stop there, my friends. 
Jesus Christ rose from the dead three days later, and he conquered sin and death, and he offers to share that victory with us. And that's the greatest news of all. So in closing, I want to tell you that even though we've been going through a lot with this COVID crisis for this last year, we can still have fellowship with each other. Here at Woodland, we have so many different small groups that still meet via Zoom in our church. And we still have Wednesday night Bible studies like tonight on Facebook and YouTube. And we still have Saturday night prayer with Pastor and Becky on Facebook. And we still meet in person and online every Sunday morning for two services. So we're still a community of believers who, in spite of the lockdowns and social distancing, we are still the body of Christ, and we still want to have fellowship with each and every one of you. A couple of things that we can do now that we have the uh, COVID is we can start using our social media for good. When you're online for either Wednesday night Bible study or Saturday night prayer or Sunday service, let us know you're watching. Interact with each other. Let each other know that you're praying for their specific needs. And it's also a great time to tell others in our church family that you need prayer and what you need prayer for. You can share your joys and your sorrows with one another. You can reach out to somebody on Facebook or some type of social media platform and let them know that you've been thinking about them and that you're praying for them and their families. There are so many of us who haven't seen each other face to face in a long time. So keep in touch with each other. Exchange phone numbers or emails and send a little text every so often or email just letting someone know that you're thinking and praying for them. You can start online Bible studies or prayer groups with your friends and family. You can drop off food to someone's porch for no reason at all other than you were thinking about that person. In an age of social distancing, we need to continue to stay connected. And I know that we all miss saying hi to each other. We all miss hugging each other and being able to gather with each other. But we can still wave hi. We can still give air hugs and touch elbows. You can also continue to be generous. Give your time to others safely, either by phone or, as I said, if you know somebody that needs groceries, you can grocery shop for an elderly neighbor. Or with the nice weather starting to come, you can cut lawns for people that you know need help cutting lawns. Or you can help them do yard work. You can invite family and friends to join you online for our services. And with the nicer weather coming and Easter right around the corner, you can join us here at Woodland for our Easter extravaganza on Saturday, April 3rd from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. This is going to be a great, safe, socially distanced event that we're having. And it's going to be so nice to get out in the warm weather and just have family time with each other. You can stay up to date with all that's going on here at Woodland with Pastor and Becky's daily update on Facebook. So as we continue to develop a habit of fellowship, let's remember that our motivation for our fellowship, it must be to obey God and give to others. We can and we should gather with believers in person or online to encourage someone who needs to stay strong against a flood of discouragement that they might be feeling. And when we gather, we gather to remember Jesus Christ and what he did for us. And we gather to give something to our God, our praise and worship. And we gather to encourage each other by our shared faith and values. And we gather to bless one another. We still have hope. And we have a living hope even in these times. And we serve a mighty God. God wants us to trust him. And he wants us to cling to his promises that he promises to be with us always. So stay patient, stay faithful, and in all things, pray and meditate on God's word. I hope to see you on Sunday as Pastor Rick and Pastor Corey 
we'll be talking about connections, which is a great thing for us, and talking about how we can stay connected as I have. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for the fellowship that we have here at Woodland. Whether it be online or in person, Lord, I'm just so thank you for the many opportunities that we do have to gather with each other in fellowship with each other. And I'm so thankful, Lord, for the friendships that we've made here at Woodland. And I just pray that uh, we in continue to encourage each other and we continue to help each other in times of need. And I pray that, uh, that you'll just give us more time to spend in your word, Lord God. And I pray that we will find the time to pray and meditate on your word. And I pray for anybody out there right now, Lord God, that's watching. I just pray for any of the ailments that they have. I pray for any of the joys that they're having. And I just pray that you'll be with them. I pray for the sick in our church for healing and for comfort. I pray for our community, Lord, that you will increase our burden for our community and that our love and growth in the gospel would produce a desire to see others saved, Lord. And I pray for our service this Sunday, Lord, that the gospel will continue to be boldly preached and unashamedly proclaimed and that anybody watching this Sunday or any of our other services will be blessed. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.